What's going on, everybody? I am Phil. And I'm Travis. And we are the co-hosts of Ghost in the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. If you're into things that go bump in the night and they make your sphincter tight, then we're your guys. We'll cover everything from the ghosties in the closet to the monstrouses under the bed, the yetis, the Bigfoots, everything you could possibly want in the world. And even a little true crime if it tickles your pickle. You can catch us live every week on YouTube. Or you can find us on your favorite podcast app. We absolutely f***ing crush that. Jeffrey Dahmer soaked in blood The Unabomber blowing up Waco, Texas and Heaven's Gate Alien modified men from apes Hitler faked his death and then escaped Bigfoot and the Mothman Son of Sam talking to dogs again Witches, ghosts and goblins Mysterious noise and hot things Dark arts and the skull and bones Most celebrities are probably cloned So when you're feeling all alone Grab a beer and get stoned I welcome you to the podcast Strange Brew we're here to entertain you. We're here to entertain you. It's about to get strange. There's a fucking big windstorm on my roof the other day. Fucking blew like 25% of it off. Oof. <laughs> Um. <laughs> Welcome like to it. Strange Brew Podcast. I am one of your hosts. Hello, I'm back, motherfuckers. Billy is back in the house, and we are together. We've been streaming, which you can find them on YouTube. And they suck. We I'm are back. No, they're, right. they're great. So we're <laughs> back in the building. I got vodka, water, vodka, soda, vodka, vodka. It's just water. I hate those vodka waters. I feel like like the more you drink it, the more you're hydrating yourself. So it kind of like defeats the purpose Good, of getting man. drunk. Good, man. Stay hydrated and drunk. No, but you're not getting drunk because it's too much water. So you know what we're talking about? Stupid things, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back in time to the 18th century to talk about the Black Donnellys. Ready for this shit? We're going back in time where horse carriages rode around and people just dropped their stuff where they were and that's the where they lived. I like someone just like bopping their head to this. Like, fuck uh, Doesn't it make you think good. of like a bar fight And everyone's like hitting each other with chairs and shit No I while picture a guy ri- riding a horse And he's just like bopping <laughs> Oh yeah This is on his that. horse stereo <laughs> His horse stereo He has a midget tied to the back playing piano <laughs> He's not even playing He's just coming out of his mouth <laughs> Bop da bop <laughs> But it does remind me of like oh, stupid turn where there's uh there's like a bar fight going on and there's this guy in the background just still playing piano <laughs> in like a saloon. It's like I'm <laughs> fine as long as I keep playing. Everyone wants to hear the music. So in the middle of the 19th century, life in southwestern Ontario could be fierce. Carving a life out of Ontario wilderness was a challenge for the strongest of pioneers. Probably. <laughs> Think of our wilderness right That's now true. too. Like God forbid, like the. Entire fucking province being like that thick and dense of trees. Yeah, it's like BC and shit too. But living in Europe in search of opportunity in Canada, thousands of settlers arrive in Ontario looking for a place to call their own. While this is a new world for settlers, many conflicts from the old world remained. Is that talking about when we took people's land? Is that, is well, that what you're talking that about? That's true, but obviously you have like, you know, a, a Scottish guy and then a, he sees an Irish guy live next door and he's like, those goddamn fucking Irish and their potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all about, they think they can outdrink us. Yep. So the Black Donnellys, in many respects, were the typical uh, typical of the country's new arrival. Was that talking about their skin color? No, because they're uh, they're Irish, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, but maybe that's why they were called the Black Donnellys, because it was like, nobody else is black here, but you guys are. No, they're actually completely black. <laughs> yeah, Poor and searching for new opportunities. And yeah, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, they're Irish immigrants, so... <laughs> All right, bring back the fucking St. Paddy's Day music. So, yeah, and um, poor and searching for new opportunities, James and Johanna Donnelly arrived in Canada with their young son, James Jr., sometime between 1842 and 1846. They soon had a second son, 
named Sometime Will. in four years. Oh, it's Billy. <laughs> yep. With no money but a strong work ethic, they moved to the Bidolph Township just north of London, Ontario. Oh, that's super close. I know. It is pretty. I, didn't, uh, I was in London last week. Eventually, me and Billy will probably maybe go out to the Black Donnelly Farm and see the museum and stuff because I think it would be interesting. Is to it film like it. fully like it's a house made it's like a heritage thing? Yeah, yeah. It's a, cool. I've like Chelsea's actually to get into this. Why I want to get into this when I was actually working at Swish LA with Billy way back in the day when we first met. Um, remember that lady Deb? Yeah, she gave me the Black Donnelly book. Oh, cool. And I read it, and I read it years ago, but it's pretty good, and it's a uh, heated conflict, so I took some of the research from that, but also Chelsea's grandmother, uh, rest in peace, but she uh, she also like knew that I was interested in it, so she gave me these like two books that um, had like all the heritage and the stuff and about the conflicts and the photos from back then and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. That's sweet. It's so fucking hot, man. Yeah, it's hot in here. I can't put on the AC because you're like, it's too loud. (laughs) So obviously, you know, they came here with no money. They they moved just north of London. And in 1846, James and Johanna began carving a homestead out of the wilderness beside the Roman line and Bidolph township near town of lucan so that's where the house is actually in is okay pretty interesting but he's got to be like the smallest fucking communities ever because i've never heard of any of these names and they're they're like no they're they're pretty small and like the dollars kind of showed up with no title to their land and they were like all right let's just build a house here they had no fucking right to the land. They're squatters and squatters rights. Yeah, I guess so. And they were clearing the trees and building a farm and establishing a life for themselves. So they kind of saw land. They're like, and then, I'm gonna. That looks good. I got an axe. If we put the work and in. I got two nails, let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. He like cuts the nail into sixteen, so now he's got sixteen <laughs> That's little funny. nails. That's funny. So the Donnelly's farm here. Donnelly's farmed here for the next 10 years, with Johanna giving birth to five more sons. So, altogether, they have seven sons. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the normal for back in the day, though. Like, my, 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 yeah. my mom and my dad are both families of eight. Well, I, yes, my, what, my mom isn't, but my dad, remember I told you, like, uh, well, he has five brothers and one sister. And I always mm-hmm. say that they're all different versions of my dad because they all, like, look different. They're just, like... They look the same, but they're like one's fat and one's gay and one's churchy. Looks like Ned Flanders. It's like it's like just branched off. I got a better like my mom's whole side kind of like clearly looks the same. It all came from the same mom pa. And then my dad, oh, I think uh, I think my grandma was a little bit of a hoozy. <laughs> oh really, dude? Every single one of his brothers, like one looks Mexican, one is like. <laughs> Like pale as shit and like four foot two. One I is swear. my dad. That's like a big tubby dude. And like I'm like this is like not even kind of close to being similar or brothers whatsoever. <laughs> These are all different dads. I know it. No, I swear. I swear it was just you, Johnny. I swear. <laughs> I don't Jimmy. know, Jimmy. <laughs> no, I, I was gonna say uh, I got close. <laughs> well, yeah, Jimmy. Actually, yeah, really, Jim, yeah, Grandpa Jimmy. I never met him, but he was. Did he's he not die? my grandpa, but he was apparently the one that birthed all the kids. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, they they farmed here. They kind of you know the Donnellys farmed here the next ten years, and they she had five more kids. Uh, and and actually the family's only daughter Jenny. So I guess they had eight kids. Now that I think about it, the work was backbreaking but rewarding. As the family began to prosper, their success, uh, the success was not to last. However, as People pretty much were claiming of the property now, right? Because people are starting to move in. Everything's fresh. Everyone wants to a spot to call their home. Yeah. So people, not the Black Dollies, <laughs> actually chose to like pay for their land, and and because that's obviously split up in sections. Is that how you did it back then? Did you actually pay, or did you just run off the natives off the land? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty like much. mine. And yeah. if you're already there, like, and you got an axe, like, come fight me. Mine, fuck off. It's pretty. It's that's pretty much. Like who would who would you pay if there wasn't a, a, an establishment? There was by this time. Oh, there was okay. an establishment, but it wasn't. It was like we were still obviously owned by Britain and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure at this time. So it comes down. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so 1800. So uh, he he um, swims over to Britain <laughs> uh, to 
I don't know, paint a picture, I guess, of where he would like his land piece. And they're like, sure. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, I guess that's true. And then true. He, 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 I swims back <laughs> and uh, shows that piece to the, the family that set up shop there. And he's pretty sure that so that's, he, that's what yeah, the painting looks like. He's painting a picture. And then, you know, he starts with, the, you know, he shows like the natives and their teepees and stuff. And he's like, you know what? We just build here. And then he starts erasing. All yeah. <laughs> he's like, and if our house is big enough, it can just kind of demolish this piece. <laughs> yeah. So Patrick Farrell purchased the Donnie's land. With uh, from the absentee landlord in 1856 to 1857, so it's a landlord that was kind of there, but not really. He kind of just owned the land, and he obviously, and then he was like, "Oh, stop by once a year." Yeah, like it wasn't that often, right? For, for monies. Yeah, it's like there's a place near where me and Billy live. I'm pretty sure, and it used to be. I don't know if it any, anymore. There was like a that complex in like Paris was like owned by a fucking dude in like Boston or some shit in yeah, like the states, time, and yeah. he was like, I heard rumors that he was like a mafia guy and shit. And he was just purchasing properties all over different fucking like Canada and the states yeah, it's and like stuff. Find it really fucking like honestly. Weird. So when they arrived in Canada from Ireland, he was a, uh, surprised to find the Donnellys living there and farming. He's like, um, weird. Why are you here? I just bought. <laughs> oh, buddy, fucking cut down all the trees. How does he even know? How did you know where you went? I don't understand all this. Like, there's got to be so there's many some different roads, obviously, but it's like. He's fuck. like, if you take exactly 16,432 steps from that one tree that I carved a <laughs> hole in. You end up here. And this and that, is my that hole in that tree is called my fucking tree. Yeah, that's my fucking tree. <laughs> Strange bird. So obviously like Farrell confronted James Donnelly senior telling him to get the fuck off my land. James despised being smaller than Farrell. He's like, motherfuckers taller than me, <laughs> which is fucking weird. A little short man syndrome there. He's got, but he beat the living shit out of him Damn. while the family cheered him on. Of course. He's like, my land <laughs> fucking crazy. So he's like, you know, he shows up and he's like, no, this is my land. He's like, yeah. And he's like, you look a lot bigger than me. You think you can take me? You think you can take me? And then they fucking tussle. And he, I guess he beats the fucking shit. Well, man. remember he had an axe. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, the other guy was scared. He just he just thought <laughs> he would just leave. Well, realizing fists didn't work, Farrell took the Donnellys to court, where the judge made a compromise a <laughs> between the two. While the land belonged to Farrell, it was James and Johanna who had put the work into making the farm, which is like back breaking work like they got a bunch of horses obviously and like try to tend the farm and and make like obviously the soil fresh and nice which it would be so much fucking work it, it's literally all they'd be doing for years farming is hard enough now when we have machines and shit and it's still hard work i couldn't imagine back then man just strap a thing to a horse it's like giddy up and it's like three days later and the fucking is finally the soil's mulched up and shit just one line <laughs> yeah, like yeah. only seventeen thousand more, <laughs> more to go, go. Oh, so fucked so obviously like you know and so the judge therefore put an order that the donnelly should keep their part of the land that they have cleared and that uh, pharaoh could have the rest so it's almost like oh, fair I, I, so I, he yeah. literally could have just Stopped it and just let not, them live. Yeah. Just been like, hey, look, this is my land. I'll just take, I guess, what you didn't yeah. do. Neither side was happy with this verdict. And it's like, this Fuck case off, is the rest interesting is and yeah. everything like that. And it's the fact that, like, you know, I don't know whose side I'm really on at the end of this, but I like the Donnelly's. That, that is the hardcore. fairest fucking ruling you could possibly I know, do. Because be like, he, he just put showed in up. years worth of work. But also they just showed thinking, up and said, this is but mine. But thinking that it was nobody's. And then somebody just goes and buys it. And then at the like, same time, that's what the Spanish did. Yeah. It's just like, this is mine now. And the name's like, uh, what? And it's like, here's your smallpox vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. Well, so the, I, so I don't know how fucking true this is, but I was reading up on it. And supposedly people believe that it wasn't the blankets that the British gave and the Spaniards gave to the natives that killed them. It was the smallpox vaccine, which is like kind of contradicting. Oh, in shut the fuck <laughs> up. Know, like, yeah. Vaccines weren't even a fucking thing. Yeah, it was. Smallpox is the very first vaccine. It's actually known as the most uh, deadly vaccine in history. I understand the first vaccine. And One of is, the first, yes, I guess. Which is still... Yeah. Much after that happened. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, like, James Donnelly wasn't happy either. 
So Pharaoh viewed this land as his and felt he got fucked in the ruling. Well, you should have fucking looked at who, who was living on it before you bought it. He gets his massive long telescope from fucking Ireland and be like, or how about you stop buying <laughs> land you haven't seen? It's like these stupid people buying houses without fucking home inspections. That's fucking extremely true, actually. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> James Donnelly wasn't happy either, and he showed his anger, Pharaoh claimed, by making all sorts of attacks on him. You motherfucker. I'm just joking. <laughs> like, Damn. Including supposedly killing his livestock, lighting his barn on fire, and even taking a shot at him. Just like kind of pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Cause it was more like, all right, you stand there, fucking feral. And he's like, when did muskets come out? I feel like we talked about this. Like the eight, like, uh, I think it was like, it wasn't the early or the late 1700s. Yeah, you're sure as shit. It came out in 1521. So the, the first gun or the first musket? Musket. Like, yeah. what the fuck is the first gun? Muskets well, were the first. No, I, the first gun I thought were the, I guess so, but I thought, you know, the pirates, they were around the 1600s, and they had those little, like, fucking cock back, like, shoots a little. Essentially, it was a hand cannon. That's what they used to call it, remember? Like, pirates used to call them hand cannons. It's probably just a fucking it was the, gun. It was the same, well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't pierce all the way through. It was the same aspect of a cannon. It was just meant for your hand. Which is fucking trippy hand cannon, bap bap, like it's just like that's super cool. It is kind of cool. So obviously they had guns, and by this time they had rifles and stuff like that. It just wasn't the greatest rifles, but it's almost like those where they like has like like the down stem where you yeah, yeah. yeah those things are fucking dope. I like those cock it like a shotgun, cock like a shotgun. It just makes you think like how much free time people had too, and it's like some guy decided to spend. It, this guy decided to spend. A year or two building this fucking land every day. And yep. some guy probably spent like two to five years figuring out how to kill his neighbor <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he's bigger than him. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. It's true. This is literally Donnelly was charged with this attack, but he's never convicted. It's like, oh, he was mad. He missed. He missed, man. Fair trade. So <laughs> yeah. in 1857 at a uh, at a barn raising bee, which is. Uh, I don't, I think, I don't know what a barn raisin bee is. I think that's where, you know, where they erect the barn and they put the two sides together and then put a roof on it, you know, it's, heave, ho, and they go. Well, um, men and I see this a lot is every single person in the community will come over Oh yeah, and everybody yes. will bring their hammers and then wh- whatever host is getting the barn built for them makes food for everybody. Oh yeah. And then yeah. Everybody so else sense. in one single fucking day will build a barn. I, yeah, because that's what I was picturing in my head is like a it's bunch not, of people. It's, yeah, it's not necessarily as uh, as uh, contrast as <laughs> Family Guy makes it seem to be. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, I know. And they just like put it together, just like folds but up honestly, into a house. But honestly, it is like that. Like uh, I know and like, they all get my, drunk mom's, after. my mom's from Mennonite culture, and uh, yeah. they would, yeah, like hearing stories of my aunts and uncles, they'd take roughly about everybody in the village working together would take roughly about seven, eight hours and you'd have from absolutely nothing really? to a full completed barn. That's kind of cool. It'd be hard, hard ass work. And I guess that's why they would. And be now drinking. it takes 17 years to fucking pave a road. You stupid fucks <laughs> pave the fucking thing. Stop milking your money or get another job. Cause I swear to fucking God, if I have to go around one more detour, I, st- I, I will, you know, those fucking speed fines will be doubled in construction zones. I'm fucking killing them. I'm running over that stupid <laughs> cocksucker that's eating a sandwich standing over the fucking pothole fuck that guy <laughs> there's, that there's my rant the <laughs> so that sounds fun so obviously the funny thing is right like like the you know these the tensions kind of came to a head and Farrell and james donnelly like the rest of the men there were drinking all day long of course everybody would everybody would just get loaded erecting this barn yeah and they're fucking good workers too and it's funny that they showed up to like kind of help i guess the donnelly's did obviously because it's a whole shin- like shindig everyone wants to go and yeah. hang out because obviously some that's how you make communities and well, if you true. ever need anything and you didn't show up to somebody else's like yeah. fucking hell is anyone showing up to yours like, can i get some butter no you weren't there to help me erect my barn pretty much honestly <laughs> You don't do one fucking thing. You're shunned. It is kind of crazy. You think back in the day where they would be like, um, you have some sugar. You just go to your neighbor. If you didn't have sugar and you just get it off them. Nowadays, people are like, get away from me. You know what? Do you have the disease? And it's like, put on your mask when you're around me. Well, t- t- okay. <laughs> just but also to be fair, we now have cars and a lot yeah, of convenience I know. stores. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and a lot of immigrants that own those convenience stores. Yeah, no uh, sure. We love and you they all. all have sugar there up Mark. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Big bags. of <laughs> it. 
And it's actually cocaine that the cartel funneled in, and then, then nobody buys that oh, sugar. Oh, that's cheap-ass <laughs> fucking sugar. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so, um, obviously, uh, words were exchanged, and then uh, soon, obviously, after that, the men started throwing punches. I just imagine everyone watching, like, oh, fuck, man. They're doing it again. Because it seems like it's, like, the dad, the dad Donnelly, James, like, yeah. fucking senior. And this stupid fuck. I bought some land. And then they're Without just, like, constantly at yelling at each other. And then they just finally start fighting. And everyone's like, this is, like, the fifth time this week. That and we just kind of let him do it. The guy just keeps beating the fuck <laughs> yeah. out of him. He keeps coming back. And we just kind of, like, let him do it. Well, it's like that uh, king size line where it's, like, if uh, if I fight you and you beat me, you'll fight me every time you see me. Like, which is, like, such a fucked up mentality, though. <laughs> and there's Conor McGregor for you. Yeah, it's true. But and he keeps fucking losing. He's fucking like, fucking foot, man. That nothing was checked. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop fucking crying. And Chelsea was like, because uh, she'll watch like the fights with me if I rent. So them and stuff. fucking. And she's crying. like, this is like, f- like she's like again, again something happens during a fucking like the big. Well, of fight. course, shit happens. Yeah, like that. That's just whatever. But like his fucking reaction to it. Going, oh, you got lucky again. You got lucky again. <laughs> Let's do it again. And next time you won't be so lucky. And then there was a fucking Instagram meme that was going around that fucking killed me. And it was like, and then it fast forward to fucking, it was like Conor McGregor Poirier fight 17. He's in like the hospital. He's like, <laughs> you got me the last 16 times, but next time, Poirier. And then like, and then it's like fight 18. It's like a gravestone. Well, I, like, said to, I said to Chelsea and um, I don't know if we talked about it, but I said like Conor's like getting soft because of money. It just seems like it's, he's getting progressively worse and worse. Like he's not the, at his peak anymore. No, he lost that. And then and we're talking the about drugs, Irish people man. anyway. Plus and the drugs. You think he, that he was doing coke and stuff? Or uh, like, not, I think. He flaunted it. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. It was like, buddy, I do a 17 reels. I'll still fuck your girlfriend. That's, did you say that Same recently? Like that. No, that was like probably two or three years ago. That's so crazy. Yeah, Coke would do that too. It would just make you that shit. And then plus there was videos well. of people like filming him doing drugs. And he's like, get this film out of my. And then, yeah, sure should have made it. Wow, you know, that. and that's what that would fuck your career up because drugs are not good for like cocaine would be good for like if you just start doing coke. Especially your muscle mass. Yeah, I know. Yeah. If you just started doing coke, it would be good. Then after like a year when you're starting getting hooked on it, your whole fucking life goes down. What do you down. mean it would be good? Like at the beginning, if you just started doing coke and you get aggressive and you're ready to go, but then after a while it just becomes it, you could become to a um dependency. Yeah, and you just it doesn't do the same thing and then you're just like down on your luck all the fucking time. That's cr- I didn't know that fucking well fuck man Irish people they like to come back and just keep fighting obviously because I don't keep going it's always entertaining I know because obviously Farrell was bigger than like fucking James yeah. Donnelly Senior much taller and heavier than so James. he was getting fucking frustrated that he kept <laughs> but James was tough did they as say he always leather. Went? Yeah, uh, yeah, because that's what it's like. They uh, but he built a fucking farm. No shit, but he's fucking built. You, your little pussy ass went to took a stroll to the local fucking buying land store. Yeah, you that's bought true. some fucking and land. This guy, yeah, it's true because it you seems probably like, skipped to the fucking house. Well, it seems like Pharaoh obviously had money and came from, and that's probably why. Don, James Donnelly didn't like him because he came from probably money and had to be able yeah. to build nice big farms. And then he's looking over at his farm, and then you see that like in a it's scene like, from a movie, uh, or like the door falls. It doesn't off. actually <laughs> fall, but the whole thing just kind of shifts. shifts. It's yeah. like stay, stay, stay. Okay, it's still standing. <laughs> so their drunken brawl came to an end quickly with James driving a hand spike through fucking Farrell's head, killing him instantly. Is that fucked? Damn, everyone was witnessing this too. Yeah, because they were all fighting. Oh, and this that would have like, been a fucking oh barn. Fucking and they're brawling, and then all of a sudden, because there was like the obviously spikes to put in the ground yeah. and stuff like that, and he just drives one through his fucking skull. Was that fucking crazy? Like in the middle of all these people were like, why were cops well, like back then? <laughs> the sheriff? I, I just, yeah, I, well, I just picture like, you know, it's Canada. So I don't really know. I'd have to like research that actually. Cause eventually I want to do an episode, maybe just about the history of police. Cause it's kind of interesting. Yeah, in it way. Is. But uh, yeah, I just picture like British cops, like Billy clubs is swinging them as they walk around with their stupid little hats. <laughs> You know, like the stupid little fucking hats. It's like, what's that hat going to do, man? And they fucking, the cops are still wear what it. what they're going to do. It's saying like, yeah. they, it's just a like uniform saying like, look at us. Jesus this is like, like, if you need us, we're easily spotted. That's what those are for. 
What's that? Is that a family guy where they're all riding around and it's like a fucking the doodle doodle? Yeah, like yeah, they're getting music. chased by the billy clubs. <laughs> That's funny. So with the police after him, James fled into the wilderness. He's like, I'm going to go hang out with fucking Bigfoot because I know I saw him out there when I was making my house. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't. He actually invited me, but I, I was not running from the law. Then I said, he was a lot bigger than me, so I tried to fight him. Once and he I threw killed me somebody. back to my farm. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't flee far, though, as neighbors soon began to notice a strange... <laughs> <laughs> a strange woman in a bonnet farming the Donnelly's field <laughs> dressed like yeah, a woman. Yeah, like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I don't know. Who I don't know who James is. <laughs> I forgot. He dressed like a fucking woman. And then you see this woman like carrying stacks of like wood over her head. And like, he was the first tranny. Fuck. But, uh, Pepe Le Pew. Or whatever the fuck I said on the one episode. It's, I don't identify <laughs> as him anymore. <laughs> you cannot charge me under that name. Yeah. He's ahead of his time, man. Ahead of his time. It was. I gen- wonder if there'd be a little bit of legality with that. With how things are going now being like... Because like, if you get charged with something yeah. um, and somebody doesn't... Like anything, like a debt collector or anything, and if they don't spell your name correctly... It's yeah, not, yeah, it's not right? your charge. Yeah, because I, the yeah, the I day, think I've heard that. I literally just had somebody call the office of my. I don't owe money to anybody. I literally just had an office, like to the office of where I work, saying this message is for Kirby Williams. And even my boss like laughed. <laughs> my, Kirby bo- Williams. my boss laughed. He's like, "Well, you're William Kirby. Um, don't know who Kirby Williams is. Kirby. Sounds like you're off the hook." Kirby. I'm like, "Yeah, no shit." Kirby Williams. <laughs> that should be like your stage name. I guess it kind of is because your rap name is Kirby. Yeah, but why do I got to do like Cat Williams? Like, that's not my fucking name. It's clearly a scam. Yeah, obviously. But, like, I get that all the fucking time. It, got, I it went to my work. That is fucking weird. Really and I was like, weird. what the fuck? That I'm is like, really I don't even, weird. Like, I literally called them back. Like, I don't owe any money. Nobody answered. I'm sure I'm on some sort of watch list. I fucking guarantee you. With all the fucking shit I say on TikTok. Four counts strong. <laughs> Stupid. It was James disguising himself so he could continue working on the farm, which I just think is the funniest fucking shit that he's like, hey, uh, Johanna, like, uh, she's like, you know what? I got, I've lost a little weight. I have an extra bonnet. I actually have an extra bonnet, a little dress you can wear. And it's just like, I wonder if he, I, I, I'm pretty sure like they shaved back then and they were like clean cut because that was like the time. Some people had big beards, but mostly a lot of people when it started to be like civil, you had to be like clean cut and stuff like that, especially like during yeah, getting no into hair. the, like the 20th century and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So. I just, I just find that fucking hilarious. I'm watching the sweat drip off I your forehead. I know. I'm fucking hot as shit. Eventually, after spending a winter in the woods, James turned himself in. He's like, you know what? I've had a fucking enough of this goddamn shit. Yeah, it's cold out here. I don't like this. He's <laughs> like having, having a fire, and then Bigfoot's like, do you want to cuddle him? He's like, get away from me. You're too big. At this point, <laughs> like, you have a farm. Why can't you just hide somewhere? Just hide he on was the trying. Farm. He was trying to hide away from no, the but fucking in the farm. Like, just just go back like you had a whole winter they're obviously not checking your barn every single fucking day i think like there's like those like the da, 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 like cops showing up on little horses and stuff like ponies like yeah. how like how little action happened in this town that after a winter you were still suspect number one i think this guy and uh, i know what you're gonna say so fuck you but uh, i bet this guy's like five foot like four but he can still fucking beat the <laughs> shit out of like that fucking huge dude. Because I can just imagine this little Irishman. If you think about like a Conor McGregor, yeah. because they were like skinny but built fucking dudes. He was like a fucking well, little Conor yeah, McGregor. Any any fucking dude that works versus any dude that doesn't is gonna kill. Him. And then every time physical he fought, labor always wins. He pulled up his pants and did the fighting Irish. <laughs> It's like pull this I've always wanted to see two people fight like that, and just like the dirtiest uppercut where like somebody do, leaves the fucking. Used to do that in the restaurant. Feet. Remember when Kyle used yeah. to do that? He used to pull it up to his like nipples. And this fucking kid we work used to pull his pants up to his nipples and fucking do the fighting Irish dance and like fuck with people. It was pretty funny actually. Fun, fun fucking times. Now we're old. <laughs> so the judge sentenced him to death, but the sentence was actually changed and he was actually like it was commuted to seven years in kingston penitentiary kingston ontario where they put that penitentiary was there in the 1800s yeah and no remember who they put there there, right uh fuck couple people bernardo remember bernardo was there yeah and until they closed it down 
I think it's closed I now. Was still open. That's how old it is. I, I thought that I heard that it was closed down because they had to relocate him because he was such a dangerous prisoner. I'm pretty sure Kingston's still open. We should go there. I've went there already. I went there with my school for a class trip. How long ago? Grade six or seven. Patrick Farrell's death was just the beginning of the Black Donnelly story as it pulled them into a bitter feud with many neighbors because they're like, man, uh, well, I'm just trying to live here with my kids. It wasn't his fucking, yeah. I know we murdered all these indigenous people, but like, I'm trying to live. I know they're trying to live, but we just came in and took everything. And now like, I'm trying to, this, I, my kid witnessed a spike going through a man's head because of this guy. (laughs) Yeah. Like, so did my kids. The children would have been there. Fucking leave him alone. (laughs) Children wouldn't have been there. Yeah, the the resurrection. The re- the uh, how young? Nine times out of ten, they went. It's probably there. the mothers holding the babies. Yeah, on their they, they would have all been shit. inside. I mean, yeah, men are outside working. Yeah, women are inside with the kids. Yeah, making drinks, giving them cocktails. Yeah, here's a whiskey. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Well, Stop James, crying. <laughs> well, James Donnelly returned home from prison in the mid 1860s. He found his boys had grown into men. Jim's boys took after his father. They were tough as fucking nails. Of course and they were. They had they the were fucking never work. afraid to throw a punch. This is why this story is so dope to me. Like they, they're like these hardcore Irish fucking immigrants, Canadian essentially now, and they know and the boys are all Canadian because they were like born and raised here and they don't yeah. give two fucking shits about what you have to say. They're just like this fucking tough as nails attitude, like you want to come at me, I'll come back at you even harder. Like that's why the story is so interesting. And it's funny because they did this show and and about the Black Dollies, kind of. It was like a new age version of it. I enjoyed the show, but they based it in Boston, I'm pretty sure. Which is stupid because it's in Ontario and they took the Black Donnelly name and they just did all the show like about like this family that owned a bar that were immigrants and people didn't like them. And it's just like, don't take our fucking stories, bro. The fucking stupid bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> but it wasn't just James that influenced them. No son of Johannes would be shrinking vi- a shrinking violet either. So I'm guessing a pussy. And shrinking t- violet. violet. I like that. That's kind of neat. Well, it's just like, guess, it's yeah. their terminology because even shrieking, you mean? No, shrinking. Like shrinking. Like, oh, I'm, don't a punch shrinking. me. Is that what violets do? I would guess that. But think about it. Like, I was listening to something the other day and they're talking about like, oh, yeah, like people, you know, didn't people swear back then? Like, and it was more like, like people just said fucking shit, but it, and, and, and maybe not pussy because pussy is kind of a newer term, but they would say things like, dag nabbit, you dirty rascal. They'd like, say pussy. Pussy didn't mean the same thing though. Yeah. Pussy meant endearing and charming. It actually did back then. Yeah. You pussy? But no, oh, it'd be like uh, nice girls would call guys pussy if they were like I romantic. I feel like I've heard that before. If a guy was romantic to a girl, they'd be like, "Oh, you're being such a pussy," and like they, it was like <laughs> it so was weird, no? it was like a compliment though. Yeah, it was like a wow, like and they tell his friends like gloating about them, be like he's the biggest pussy. <laughs> but I just they just said things differently, right? Like yeah. dag nabbit, you goddamn rascal. Like it was just different. They didn't actually swear the way we do now. But like, oh, so, dude, there are certain words that just set you off, right? Like yeah. go to even my father, call him a goof, and watch what happens. Mm-hmm. Like a goof, and he's like fucking tweaking. So for anybody, like you just yeah. put your fucking finger up his ass without his consent, tweaking. <laughs> for anyone that uh, wants to call someone a goof in uh, jail, do not fucking do it. That's instant fight words. Instant. You call a guy a goof. Not in even jail? just fight words. Those are instant. Like yeah, not only is that like a fight, but like there's a good chance you're going to be fighting six guys. Yeah, and if you if you say even like even you say like stop being a goof, <laughs> stop being a goof, you'll get one punched by a big black guy. Like they immediately. That means you're like you're a bitch in prison. You know, fucking say that. Same with whistling. If you whistle in prison, you'll get the shit beat out of you. And that's why goof. It wasn't birds just and being free. I feel like. Oh, what? No. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? Yes, 100%. If you whistle in jail, they'll beat the fuck out of you because it resembles birds and being free. No, I just, like, I knew they didn't like whistling, but, but like, why. I didn't. That's kind of neat. It's not fucked. That's kind of neat. I didn't know that. But uh, I feel like the reason goof and things like that in prison have lasted longer is because those were actually hardcore words. Yeah. Back like 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So those guys haven't seen the outside world. Well, those are still hardcore we, words. I, I think I've said this before on this podcast. Who knows? It's, we've been doing this for fucking two and a half years or so, whatever. And that uh, even longer. It's like since it started, we've been doing this three years, but we started very slow. And then we consecutively did it every week. But 
I was telling the story about like how I'm pretty sure I've said this. Then grade seven, we were all calling each other goofs and stuff. And then the one teacher was like, it said in front of the class, she's like, all right, well, I've been hearing you guys call each other goofs a lot lately in the past couple of weeks. And you know, that means in prison that you're someone's bitch. And she said that to us. And we were like, she's like, so I wouldn't say that outside of when you get older and stuff like that. Like she like told us straight. Probably a good idea to like, yeah, <laughs> watch your fucking mouth. Please. So it was crazy that Johanna was like almost just as hardcore, if not more hardcore sometimes in, in uh, the essence of her presence as the father. Cause in the years following Jim's imprisonment, Johanna raised her boys to be fighters. Boss she, ass bitch. Needs yeah, boss ass she, dude. She fucking took him outside and was like, you beat punch me. me. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Think you can hit your mom? <laughs> fucking. And then she slaps the shit out. No, of him. just fucking one punches him, but he drops to his back. This is you just fart. No, it's one of the dogs whining. <laughs> you, uh, you, um, but that's like kind of like because I'm sure this is the, the time era stuff. She probably beat her kids. Oh, they said one th- wrong thing against her. I didn't or, realize that that was a time era. My mom did that to me too. Well, your mom's Mexican. So. <laughs> she thought she taught them to fight. She taught them to fight dirty. Okay, so you grab them by the balls, grab them by the balls hard, yeah. squeeze his testicles. Whatever the f- <laughs> fuck that. Honestly, there's a winner and there's a loser, and like true. there's yeah, you don't fight dirty no. if you're fucking like up for a UFC match. But like you're fighting for your, your life, life and your yes, rights, you yes. fucking do whatever you, you bite fucking him, you can. claw yeah. him, you pull his goddamn fucking long yeah. bun. If the guy's got a man bun, you pull that shit right off his head because he shouldn't be wearing that in the first place. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that doesn't really count. You don't come across that too much anymore. I know. I you don't, but when I see it now because it was so popular, like two or three whatever years ago. Now I'm Danny like, had I, one a couple months ago. Who? Danny. Why? Because he's just refused to Billy's cut his hair brother. for a while. <laughs> and he's like, fuck it, it's in my I eyes. I get if you're <laughs> a man, honestly, and you wear a ponytail and you have long hair, I get it. Like, I work at that bill oh, the guy. the bun looks a little better than a ponytail. Uh, I don't know about A ponytail is a little lame. Yeah. I'd rather put it in a bun than a ponytail. What about, like, uh, good old, like, um, barefoot, and he, like, has his long native hair and a fucking... Well, that's... There's nothing like you that. can fucking do about that. Yeah. That's his culture. <laughs> that's cultural appropriation when you do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wear my hair in a ponytail all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, Johanna taught them to hit first, <laughs> talk later. I love, love that attitude. It's fucking kind of sick. Well, figure out if you actually needed to hit him after you hit him. And because if yeah. you did, then you did good. And if you didn't, you can apologize. And the boys took these lessons to heart. And that's why I like, like, about that back in the day shit. Like, even my dad used to tell me stories about, like, you know, how because he had all these brothers, somebody picked on the one brother and you beat the shit. These, like, two yeah. kids and said, nobody went to the cops. It was just that you took your lickings and you go the fuck home. Yeah. Like it's you know you don't call the police. Or, you know what? The only time actually that's funny. The only time I ever did that, I think I told you on that story too. It was a lot younger and it's a lot more ridiculous because like obviously I was gonna win this fight. Yeah. <laughs> I only did that once. Uh, my little brother was having an asthma attack. He was uh, in grade two, so I was in grade six. So that's that's a big jump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his kid was uh, bullying him and he's like, had him on the ground and he was just like, oh, you can't get up. You can't get up. You can't get up. And I noticed he was having an asthma attack. Oh, yeah. You told me that. And fuck. I kicked this kid in the temple as hard as I could. Just so bad. I just fucking booted <laughs> the side of a fucking grade two. While I was in grade yeah. six, a grade two's face watched him scream, cry on the ground and went. Come on, Jimmy, let's go. <laughs> I grabbed his arm. I'm like, fuck Yeah, him. and back then, <laughs> Billy was so mischievous that when he hit the back of his heel, he and he actually made a little boot with a knife on it, and the knife went right through the kid's temple, and he Girl, killed him. stupid. I was just saying. Like, <laughs> honestly, I could have killed that kid anyway. Uh, like, yeah, just, know, But that have. instinct to be like, that's my fucking family. Fuck off. That's how like, there's those pressure points in your neck if you hit somebody, uh, if you like even hold somebody in those pressure points in their neck and make them like pass out or kill them, which is pretty fucked up. Which one? Do you just show me so I can do no, it? No, I'm not fucking sure. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bill was showing me the other day, and he's like, I was like, stop doing that. And he's like, just don't press me harder. Hey, just don't fight me right now. <laughs> <laughs> While James was away in prison, his sons became known throughout the township as fighters. Like, they probably, anyone that even looked at them the wrong way, they probably fought them. Because back then, it's the whole mentality of the more you fight, the better you get. The, yeah. You learn from fucking fighting Absolutely. and shit like that. So they gained a reputation as thieves and vandals. Oh, uh, well, they didn't have to go that way. <laughs> so tools and supplies went missing from neighbors' farms on a regular 
regular basis. Like, um, we only have three hammers and there's like eight of us. Let's go get six more. <laughs> or eight. That was bad. Math. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Five more. Five more. <laughs> Don't even, Tom. I said three. Yeah, and then you said plus six for eight. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Worse, rivals' barns were lit a fire. <laughs> Whatever, I had the fucking time. <laughs> uh, cattle, was, uh, cattle was poisoned, and horses were fucking mutilated. Oh, I don't like these kids anymore. They're fucking with the animals. Don't be fucking They're with the, the horses and the cows. They're the most mischievous kids you could imagine. You can you can throw down against someone that looks you the wrong way, but like don't fucking fuck with the animals. It seems boy. like there's so many of them. Okay, so it was seven kids. Uh, actually, it wasn't not eight. It, oh, it was eight with the the girl. Yeah, the girl. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm, but, I'm just fucking. Is the girl crazy. also fighting, or is she just like, <laughs> brother, <I think> <laughs> steal that diamond necklace for me? <laughs> oh, <that family> <laughs> They obviously protected their sister at any fucking circumstance. And, of course, you got seven fucking and brothers. And probably any boy that looked at her the wrong way, I couldn't imagine, man. Yeah, that girl's probably petrified to, like, even date anybody. The book was so good, and, like, we're not going to... This could be hours long, but we're not going to get into, like, every single fucking detail, but the book is extremely detailed in, in the way... And I'm trying to remember, because it's so long ago, but I'm pretty sure, like, if they looked at some... If somebody looked at their sister wrong, they would beat the fuck out of him, almost kill them, threaten them in every single fucking way. So, you know, you don't fuck... With these with, motherfuckers. I was like the with sister. Donald. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they mutilated horses. Rather thing is like, I think that's not fair. It's more of them just being misty in poison cattle. So they're just that, being assholes. Yeah. They're being pieces of shit. But that's at the mean. same time, their father's in prison because they probably think this guy deserved to get a spike in his skull. Yeah. And they, they fucking took my daddy away. Let's fuck this town up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, few were willing to confront the Donnellys about these crimes, but many suspected their hands were at work. Uh, Nat Hanley, in his book about the Donnellys, I'm pretty sure that's the one I, ha- I have, notes that the Lucanites learned the hard way that it is unwise to turn to the authorities for help. One local farmer named Bob McLean tried to press charges against the Donnelly for theft of his tools, and he was rewarded by having his house burnt to a flame again. Again? Well, he did. Well, he, they're burning at anybody that fucks them. They burn like it's like they burn their shit. What down. do you mean again? He did it twice. No, no. I just, he rebuilt. I and they did they, it again. They, they burned other people. Oh. So it's just like you know, you fuck with us, you get your shit burned down. And they actually poisoned more cattle, which is like I wonder what they used. I'm just like, do they have arsenic? Probably because they all that shit was readily available. You can get cocaine at your fucking pharmacy. And like, you, hey, you wanna you you got a cold? Here's cocaine, marijuana, and then what was the other? They had like it was like cocaine, marijuana, and like what a time! Fucking heroin, like all mixed into one. Sounds fun though. Morphine, kind of. It's like <sighs> I feel <Kevin>. better. I <laughs> feel better. I think I I can go to work. I'm just gonna dive into the bottle <laughs> and like drinking whiskey. They're drinking all the time. There was no this this yeah. thing of alcohol is gonna no hurt your health or yeah. whatever. Like you know, no credibility yeah. for anything. It's just fucking do what you want. And, and when you're super fucked up, you can't even kind of, honestly you can't even really fucking hold most of them accountable. Because sober all those minds, even in the minds or even in the situations and the mindset that they were in it would have been a totally different outcome yeah it's, it's so crazy it just i always love thinking about like you know it's it's hard to f- go reach back until in like the roman age or when we talk about the villains of history and these people that existed in, in such a time we can't picture but we still have photos and some little bit of video footage and stuff from way like in the 18th century now like obviously going the well, the 20th century and the early 19th century stuff like that so it's we have an idea of what it looked like and and in, in retrospect, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I can still f- picture it, but I can't really picture what it's like to be a Roman and fucking like other than movies, get into a gladiator fight and just, just different times. I, mean. I feel like you didn't hit the points you're hitting oh, in your head there. That was a I bunch know. of mumbo jumbo. I, I was trying, I was trying to follow that for a uh, minute and I'm like, I'm not quite uh, sure what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can kind of picture like what it's like back then to an extent. Yeah, I got, I got that much. Oh, okay. That's a, more or less what you meant, but yeah, yeah I mean, there's so many circumstances where and they, you can't you know even, what? you're not living like that. So, so you don't know. yeah, I know. So like, obviously they, they, we talked about the mutilating horses, but the, this guy, they, they, they did everything they could. The, to fuck with him and the, you know they burned down his fucking barn they poisoned his cattle and he, they slit the throats of his horses 
That's his way of travel. That's like going to like all of his cars that some rich guy owns and be like, fucking. Better <laughs> living. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. that's worse. I'm just joking. Yeah, it is true. It, it, and then. Uh, Bro, speaking of cars, quick side story. Fucking love where my office is downtown Cambridge. I was outside having a smoke with uh, my boss. We're just talking, and sure as shit, the place I always park. I bought a new car, by the way. I'm going to glow it on here. It's a nice new Lexus. Anyways, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for your applause. <laughs> Anyways, um, I always park. I, I, it was, <laughs> was a joke, Tom. <laughs> Anyways, I parked. I always park like right across the, the street on the street. Yeah. But there's an actual parking lot beside it. But it just so happened this day I came into the office, all the parking spaces were full. Yeah. So I parked in the parking lot around the corner. About having a smoke, and this fucking crackhead is screaming at the top of his lungs, saying, "I don't want to hurt you. Stop making me hurt you." And he's by himself. Is he talking to his dick? He's by he's himself. Like no, his dick. And I don't want to hurt And then him. he proceeded to walk down there and just start fucking the cars up, like booting in the door, smashed this off the fucking happened? rear mirror. Any I'm watching it, and I'm like, any I'm like, sitting here watching a smoke. Dude, it was to the point that it was so ridiculous that you didn't even do anything about it. You're sitting there and like your smoke just kind of drops, your jaw drops, and you're just kind of staring. And you're like, and he's just fucking banging on the windows, and there's like a fuckload of people around. Like there's probably to the tune of forty to forty five, fifty people watching this dude yeah, do this. Don't, don't, to uh, every single fucking car that was in the lot. Don't smoke weed, kids. I'm just joking. Don't do meth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. He's cracked out of his fucking tree. And uh, my stupid fucking ass decides to step up a few steps what? and stare at him. That's not a good idea, Billy. Because like all I his picture, mentality yeah, is not the same. I'm as well fucking aware <laughs> what it is in retrospect. But what I did in the fucking moment was different. <laughs> so I'm holding the smoke. I start walking. Like he's standing in the fucking street and I'm just I'm just fucking too. staring at him. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like looking and he's just I don't wanna hurt you and I'm like Cool. Don't want to hurt you either. <laughs> you fucking should, you stop. Can, give him the crazy <laughs> stop. eyes. Billy, Billy <laughs> opened his eyes as wide as he could and be like, you don't want none of this. <laughs> but like all I pictured and I'm like looking over there, I'm like, if my fucking car was parked there. I oh, might be dead right now. I, I would have uh, yeah, I fucking oh, killed brand him. New car. I would have, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I always park, uh, except for that day. Crazy. Isn't that nuts? Fate, man. Yeah. Fate is fucking the real, one man. fucking day I don't park there. So they, so they obviously they they you know this guy went to the police and they did all this crazy shit. They burnt his fucking barns down. They fucking poisoned his cattle. They do what Billy does at once a month, and they threw cats at the wall and killed them. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm just joking. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, arson- Cats were wild back then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Arsons and violence uh, were everywhere in Lucan and uh, the Bide, uh, Dolph, uh, whatever, whatever the fuck that county's you called. You feel like one by one, everybody would just slowly start moving out. <laughs> I know. But like, it's just like they still want to have the, they own this property. You know, it's tough you times. You sell it. And then you don't tell the sellers about the town at least. That's kind of true. I bet you. <laughs> yeah. I bet you people fucking did that. The home inspector I'm back sure then. It wasn't about the home. That. It was like this neighborhood has seven people that like to fucking burn down all your cattle. <laughs> like what? All of your horses will get slit. Uh, as for good news, we got uh, a pharmacy around the corner. that will give you some heroin so you can kind of ignore all your problems. <laughs> it's like, what did you say about that? No, there's beautiful. Don't worry land. about it. Five dollars. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, you know, obviously in the Donnelly's were by no means responsible for all of it. So there was other fucking like, I get, at the time, you there's a bunch of people, but, you can't, of but again, at the time when they're that bad, you just kind of assume everything yeah. was them. Yeah, but there was other people doing it. So that does show that the crazy time it was there. This, this was a violent place. There is little doubt, however, that the Donnelly's established themselves as probably one of the toughest families on the Roman line, which sounds like fucking fucking don't give a shit, man. That'd have been a sick game show. What families of six or more all line up 
Whoever wins yeah, yeah. wins the other person's property. Well, it's just it's just crazy that you, to the death. Oh, dude, dude, yeah, fuck that shit. I know you don't like the fact that sports are real because of the wrong guy, but I love watching that. No, I fuck know, that. Imagine obviously. that entire family fighting another entire family yeah, of seven guys from the opposite end of the country. They don't really know each other, but they both think they're the toughest, and that that'd be the fucking I just, uh, shit. I just I think sports like, can UFC be a distraction, times, but I watch 100. UFC. I like that's entertaining to oh, me. Dude. I just don't like hockey. And UFC. Shit, times like <laughs> seven versus seven like and their family no almost and like to the death. a wwe cage match but real and i know that yeah. wrestlers do a lot of fucked up shit it is crazy if you yeah, actually look at they, they, they do fucking like yeah, mankind it hurts, yeah. that fucking guy that wore the mask and had the sock you remember mankind yeah. and he would like he would jump off on the nails and shit like people did do crazy shit in wrestling but a lot of it is staged and they do get hurt look what happened to fucking uh, it's oh, not it's not that it was all fake it was that it was all scripted scripted yeah Look what happened so, to Owen Hart. Yeah. Remember that video I showed you where he comes down, he fucking dies? Like, when he comes down from, he's supposed to come down to the ring. Owen Hart died? It was a Bret, Bret Hart or Owen Hart? I no, think it was, Bret. no, Owen Hart. You'll die lonely like you're Owen Hart. You have any passes on the sign. And he comes down and they took it off of YouTube because I remember I showed you the video and now I can't find I don't it. Remember. Where he comes down this line and yeah. it's like, and it's like, like dun, yeah, almost down to the ring. And then it fucking goes really fast and he just hits the ground and you see these kids like, oh. Like and he's dead in front of all these fucking people. Just hits the ground, dies. Can't believe UFC is still even a thing. Or I uh, mean, WWE, WWE, I know it's fucking crazy. Not nuts. So obviously, like they they established themselves these tough ass fucking dudes. And when James Donnelly Senior finally returned home in 1865, he found the hardest gang in the county waiting for him. His own family, which is so like he was probably like. I'm so proud. So proud. <laughs> proud of you. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that must have been one of the best family reunions in all of history. The fact that his dad went in there like this just as hard every, as people. E- everybody was clean cut and then by the time they like walked out, every single person's got a bloody nose because they're just like <laughs> play punching each other yeah. in the foot. <laughs> No one's got teeth anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, dad. Oh, dad. Dad, you punch hard. Oh, my it's, God. Also, imagine the prison system back then. I'm sure he got into a lot of fucking tussles in prison, man. Yeah, he probably came out fucking. He probably grew. So you call me short? Yeah, he's like, he's probably, he went in there 5'4", he came out 6'3". It's fucking crazy, though, because, like, I couldn't imagine. No? I couldn't, okay. yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I whatever. couldn't imagine the prison we'll system myself. back then. <laughs> uh, the Donnellys may have left Ireland behind, but historians argue they couldn't leave behind the conflicts of the old country. For the people of, obviously, the township, with the large Irish settler population, their politics of their homeland hovered in the background of all conflicts. So they're, and this is crazy. These people, they're like, well, I knew you from like two towns over in Ireland and now you're fucking my neighbor and they didn't like each other, which I think is fucking crazy. You were two towns over. You guys were the scum. I think that's fucking nuts at the end of the day that they're like, how do they know people from two towns over? I just, I, well, I'm just I'm using it as an analogy because no, but like, I, but I bet you're not wrong. But like, yeah, think about like, being in a in a mindset like that. You got horses, sure. Maybe sometimes you go exploring, but like ninety nine percent of the time, you're just waking up, working, and going to bed. Yeah, it's true. It's so true. like and drinking, and yeah. Then, uh, but you're not so. really leaving your home unless you have yeah. a specific mission. It's true. It's so like how I, like maybe once a year you'd be able to roam around and check out a different yeah. town, but like how do you remember somebody? I know. <laughs> and then they kept these conflicts. Like the Donnellys were uh, Blackfeet. A term that followed them over to Ireland to Canada, from Ireland to Canada. Blackfeet, sounds so racist, were a Catholic Irish who chose not to fight the English or Protestants and to live in peace. And, uh, instead, oh, they were peaceful. Which is weird Probably. how hardcore and they're like the biggest... The, the the most intimidating people around this area and at the time in ireland they're like i just want to do my own fucking shit you guys stay over there yeah. i'm not gonna fight you alone, because please. you're english and you're protestant or whatever the fuck you are like yeah leave me alone but come on my land and yeah i'll fuck you up. so this may be where the black in the black donnelly name actually comes from I bet they're black. For white boys, <laughs> the Catholics who refused to live peacefully 
with the English occupation. Oh, they refused. Yes. So why are they Blackfoot? If Blackfoot meant you? No, did. no, no. The 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 Catholics. So this is this is the British. Obviously, we got you know the fucking good old British try to take over everything. Are you doing the fawns right now? <laughs> yeah, two <laughs> thumbs up. The how they how they used to try to come in and take over everything. So they were trying to invade and take over like Ireland stuff at the time. And there's all this history behind this. So the Catholics refused to live peacefully with the English occupation, right? But the Donnellys were like, whatever. Like, I just want to do my own shit, uh, my own thing. So Black Feet were nice even more hated than the Protestants. So everybody fucking hated them. And then when they, people were like, were like, oh, I remember hearing about the Donnellys, the Black Donnellys. At the same token, if you are from birth outside, like working, mm-hmm. your tan is unreal. Yeah, I know. It's true. They look like fucking Mexicans. Black dogs are much more interested in money than politics and counted the Catholics among their friends and business partners. So they just they just wanted money. They didn't give a shit who you fucking were, if you're British, if you're Catholic, you're fucking whatever. Nonetheless, Farrell's murder appears to have pulled the Donnellys firmly into the local chapter, uh, chapter of this ancient feud. The religious feud was the backdrop for all the Black Donnellys' bad relationships with their neighbors disputes over land later stagecoach lines which i I guess i don't know what the fuck that really is uh which was direct cause of conflict but religion disputes served to give local tensions an extra twist so and just religious um, i'll say this again religion is fucking stupid religion is divide and conquer the reptilians created religion so (laughs) everyone would be divided there you go terry there's your fucking ding ding um in later years the family i forgot that was a thing (laughs) in later years the family ran a successful coach line but again, I'm pretty sure that's just like you. I don't know what that is. You take people on trips like a taxi. I don't know what a coach line is. Maybe you should look it up. A coach line? Yeah. It sounds stage like a stage coach line. <laughs> the stage coach was a closed four door vehicle drawn by horse or hard going mules. So it was a so taxi. Ga- gangster donkeys or horses? <laughs> it's called gangster donkeys? No, it said hard going mules. So it, it was, means it tough was, mules or it, ta- it was a taxi. Yeah, uh, look what it looks like. It's kind of cool? awesome. Though. Yeah, they, like they still have those when you yeah, go around. Yeah. Like they even have some of those going around. In Toronto. Niagara and Toronto. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So it's a fucking horse-drawn carriage, is what it is, and that you pay for. Yes, that's kind of cool. In later years, the family ran a successful uh, stagecoach line, like we just said, but again came into conflict with their rivals. Barnes burned. Coaches were destroyed. Oh, here horses it comes. died. And suddenly, <laughs> yes. all these horses just fell on coming, razor it's blades. Like this taxi fucking like, coming in my territory with your fucking taxi. It's like Brant Cab coming into Paris. I'm like you fucking get out of here, Brant Cab. Like <laughs> that, that does happen. Cab cab owners. I've seen it happen because I used to, I know the owner of Brant like taxi, which is a place where we live. Just a guy that owns a fucking taxi company. But I, he's told me about the feuds he had with Sean, which the guy that runs the cabs in paris and it's just like they have feud with each other it's like and it still yeah, happens what are you gonna do now that uber's a thing uh, yeah that can kill taxi business too right yeah. so much it is killing taxi business it's cheaper it's, fucking, it's not even though honestly it used to be i don't know it what it's used like to now. Be. so my girlfriend takes uh uber a lot since i've been working so much yeah yeah uh she hasn't ever full license yet to drive herself but uh she'll uber does their pricing different? No, it can be, but it depends on the circumstance. So taxis will charge you per, a, co- yes. per second Miles, you're in the vehicle. Yeah. So yeah. if you get all green lights, it can be cheaper. Yes, yes, true that, true that. Uber will charge you a cheaper rate than taxis per mile, but they'll add a fee for every single light they come across. That's re- So parted. if you're going down downtown Sorry, Cambridge... Language. Yeah. That has 34 fucking lights. You get charged for every single one, which is fucked up. That is fucked up. So the Black <laughs> Donnelly's reputation for fighting and lawlessness only grew in the next few years after James Sr. returned home. It is suspected that one of the first things the family did when he got out of jail <laughs> was right over to the neighbor's house I you're gonna and say rape somebody. <laughs> lit the barn why. on fire. Ah, yeah, fuck yeah. That's where daddy went to jail. Let's fucking fuck the barn. So they burnt down another fire. That's what. That's what. That's their thing. That's they like, had to. That's dude, like their it was, signature. It was rituals. Like that's how daddy went to jail. <laughs> 
And that's how daddy's going to no, get daddy out of jail. No, daddy went to jail by shoving a fucking no, spike in No, no, no. He just was in the wrong place at the <laughs> wrong time. So the, boy. the farmer had to testify against Jim at his trial when not farming, the Donnelly boys were often out drinking and fighting and generally causing mayhem. So I think it's crazy. They go around and like they'll fight. So who is anybody. farming? They, when they're if they weren't farming, oh, they said so they they, they weren't wa- they weren't farming. They were just fighting. I thought that's what you're saying. So the stagecoach feud came to its worst one mo- uh, morning uh, a couple years later. Late one night, someone snuck into the Flanagan's barn. A fucking Mike? No, Ned. Ned Flanagan. Flanders. Oh, no. Yeah, they <laughs> they sawed up his stagecoach. And completely broke it apart. So they took a bunch of fucking old. Oh, like, they I wonder broke if it's the two horse man and buggies. saw. What if it's a two man saw? They're like, <laughs> oh, dude, those kids are jacked. They're doing a two man saw These with one kids man. Were definitely fucking jacked. They, they there were six of them, and they had six two man saws. They're doing it two hands. <laughs> no, seven of them. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's right. Chick. Yeah. So well, I'm sure one of them was kind of. And they again, I guarantee their horses, at least one of them was a bitch. Which even back in the day in in you know Western times, right? Attacking somebody's horse and fucking with somebody's horse was a no no. Yeah, that's that like the worst so thing you could do. Against because when eventually we get the Billy the Kid, that shit is like so. Billy the Kid didn't like to take things that weren't his, but there was times he did, and people did not like that. Pardon me, Billy the Kid didn't like to take things that were his. Yeah, well, he, uh, he tried to. He very much enjoyed taking yeah, things that weren't his. When the Flanagan went to the barn the next morning, he found the stage in ruins and his horse mutilated. His horses. Imagine like showing up and there's like the stagecoach broken apart, and that's like essentially sometimes their business. It's like yeah. a taxi company, and then. And the the thing that pulls his horse because they're in this feud against people that also have the same business as they do. You know what I mean? Fucking taxis. Everyone's got like there's gotta be what like four businesses back then. Yeah. You're either a pharmacist, which was a drug dealer. <laughs> uh he also sold booze. Uh you worked at the tavern. Yep. Uh you worked at the post office. Or uh or you drove people around. That was about it. it. Does that cover all the bases? What else can you think of? <laughs> I can't think of any other shows. Accusations and criminal charges followed the boys throughout their years after their father's return. In 1869, William Donnelly was charged for larceny but was never convicted. It seems like that it's always does this where it's just like, eh. Like the fact that the, the father was supposed to be sent to the gallows essentially and then he mm-hmm. wasn't. It's like throw him in yeah, jail for a, uh, a little while. Yeah, so, he'll 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 smart enough. So he and James Jr. were charged for robbing the post office again. They were acquitted. Why are you robbing the post office? Who cares about people's mail? The post office makes money, especially back then. And remember yeah, where going postal yeah. came from. That's way right. Go way way back. Wow, that was a episodes. long time ago. Uh, There's a fun fact. Quick middle because it was already in one of our old ones. Hey, really side fun fact of the day. Where did going postal come from, Tom? Going postal came from a when that uh, they came from at least one dude, but there was a couple people that uh, got so angry working in a post office that they shot it up. <laughs> and now going postal means, means you're fucking snapping. So if you, yeah, if you shoot up a workplace, you're going postal. You're going postal. Despite what some have claimed, oh, sh- shut that out. Uh, Lewis logic before fucking white. Well, I guess actually Lewis logic is black. So before fucking before white, white people, before <laughs> white logic, Lewis logic. If people don't know what that rapper is, he has a song called going postal. And he talks about like hating his boss and then coming into then shooting everybody up and shit. It's a pretty dope song. Yeah. That's not fucking good for your trial. <laughs> so despite, what some have claimed the back Don- the black Donnellys were not only the ones causing trouble in the area obviously like we said there was other people at this time everyone's fucking stirring up shit there's a bunch of Irish immigrants everywhere causing a bunch of chaos and amongst the British and the Protestants that are also Irish and all the shit that was going on and the prostitutes that was probably run rampant. So in 1870, <laughs> the family barn burnt down, likely the result of arson by one of their own enemies. So somebody had enough, and they're like, oh, well, I'm going to burn down their barn then. 
Which is like, and because and that's like where anarchy doing. starts. Everyone, yeah. it, and then it just becomes a lawless city once yep. you start taking law into your own hands. And you know what? For that exact reason, you know how often, like how how much can every single person relate to that? Exactly, right there. There's a good life lesson. Mm-hmm. If somebody fucking burned down your house and you know who it was, would you burn down theirs? Don't you think? Yeah. Wouldn't 99% of these people fucking on this planet fucking be like, fuck that guy. He just fucked my life. But now you burn down theirs. Then what happens? One of their friends go, oh, well, fuck you. You think you're getting the last laugh? And he burns down your mom's house. And then you look and down the you row find of houses and everybody is yeah, fucking Yeah, and then it becomes down. anarchy. Yeah. So it wasn't That's long crazy. before a lynch mob with Flanagan at the head, because Flanagan was pissed about all the shit that was going on, showed up at the Dolly's barn. They approached, ready to take revenge on Will and anybody else that what they found with him. So one of the sons, the oldest son, Bill, Will, you know what I mean? That's the oldest. Um, yeah, it's the oldest one is Bill, the second born, I think. When yeah, they approached, Will, Will. Yeah. It's Will. However, when they approached, they got more than they bargained for. James Sr., with the rest of the boys behind him, burst from the farm armed with clubs like they're a bunch of fucking cavemen. Ah, uh, baseball clubs. That's what I'm saying. This story is so crazy that they don't give a shit. And the fact that this is and almost... And to be fair, it's almost, like even yeah. that, that... I bet seven of them was more than the police force was. Come at me. Yeah, I know. There's like three guys. On. Yeah. Hey, you got muskets. Shoot three of us. <laughs> I bet you'll die before you kill even half of us. In in in, it's almost like in in some sense... That James Sr. was trying to essentially, because back then, you're trying to almost build a little army of your family to fuck people up. Like, that's how I kind of see it. So they were still outnumbered three to one, but that didn't matter. The Black Donleys laid into the would-be lynchers with a vengeance, beating them mercilessly. They didn't give two shits. They beat the fuck out of, like, everybody. In short, Even old women? You Most think? likely there's some granny Probably. coming out there with a knife and there's like, <laughs> granny's wheel on a knife. <laughs> the getter. So yeah. Oh, the dog lost it when I said that. <laughs> oh no, never mind. Spot is just running away from the puppies. In short order, the Donnellys emerged victorious. They beat Victory. the fuck out of a mob, man. Yeah, they're hardcore, man. So I'm saying fuck imagine that. this is what I'm saying. Imagine like seven Conor McGregors. This is what these fucking dudes are like. They don't give Conor two McGregor's shits. Conor McGregor's a pussy. Well, now he is because of money. But, but the original starting of Conor McGregor's even career, was kind of a pussy. The the people he beat weren't. Yeah, I know that's true. Yeah, like he was never really. He just ran his mouth and he was fucking entertaining as shit to watch. Their foes broken and bloody and on the ground before them. Which it's a mob. It's many people Actually, staying against them. To be fair, quickly them. before people get mad. Yeah, I don't think I could beat up Conor McGregor. That's what you're asking. <laughs> There's going to be this whole thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. You think that yeah, Billy, Billy <laughs> thinks he can be on the ground. He says he's a pussy. No, I'm just saying. Just stop running your mouth. Billy that did hard. say, because, uh, you know, that poll got a lot of attention. Billy did say he would do mushrooms one day on the podcast. I did not say that <laughs> at all. Your poll did nothing. <laughs> I, I hope to God you, that that's how democracy works. You guys put out a vote. Y'all voted yes. And guess what? It didn't change. Can you shit. still do it? Come on. A gram with me. A gram. Tom's pressuring me into doing drugs. I'm calling the cops. <laughs> By the early 1870s, however, it started to look like the boys were settling down. All right. They're like, there's like, you know, we want to, we want to live our lives kind of shit. Right. Yeah. Like several got married and started an like, honest okay. quotation. We should living. stop fucking cutting horses. You think? Yeah. We should stop I'm getting kids of my own. Horses. Someone might fuck with them. In 1873, William Donnelly, the brains of the family. So even in the book that I read, like Williams was kind of the brains. He was one of the oldest. If I think he was the oldest second, he's the second oldest. He said Will yes, was the second James born. James Jr. Yeah, and, and Will was the second born. So, and he, the, the second born was kind of like the, the brains of the operation. Yeah, like second borns like, are you know, always the smartest. We can't keep doing this because essentially Oh, wait, at you're the, time, the second born too, aren't you? Yeah. No, I was. I was the first born because my brother's my half brother. Oh, fuck him, so. That's why I'm you're stupid. stupid. Second borns are always the smartest. Yeah, yeah, you think that. If, you're, if, you're, if your mom had another kid, he'd call you stupid all the time. I'd probably beat the fuck out of him. And then he'd also beat the fuck out of you. No, I'd, I'd kick his teeth. <laughs> My brother already did that <laughs> after I called him stupid it's a couple true. times. 
Um, uh, and I, you know, like it's just kind of crazy. So, I, like, in you know, I it harkens back to the book I read, but it's the fact that like it's it is kind of crazy that that William was kind of like he had it. He had the smarts. He was like, you know, I'm not gonna. We have to do because at this time, you know, they came here. There was feuds. They're killing people. Now they're grown men. This is years later. Society is slowly starting to come into the the construct that kind of we see it today. You know what I mean? You don't go and kill your neighbor's horse because you're fucking mad. Yeah, people are like, okay, well that's <laughs> not okay to do. You don't beat the shit out of uh, out of your your family members and stuff. Like William Donnelly, the brains of the family, decided. To enter the stagecoach business, which I really thought they were in. I guess they were trying it out. And he ran the stage which, uh, with several of his brothers, working the routines between London, Exeter, and Lucan. The stage was the best to get around Lucan. It was the best around one. Around the t- time and business was good, which is crazy. That stage coaches essentially were the fucking first cabs. That if people didn't own horses, because horses were expensive and stuff like that, it's like owning a car, if you need a certain breed of horses, that they would be like, um, I don't know how that would happen. Horses though. weren't that expensive. Horses were a dime a dozen back then. Horses are expensive now. I don't know if that's correct. My but. family was dirt poor. Yeah. And they owned, I think it was 13 or 14. There's going to be someone yelling about the wrong, but They're, I don't know. Okay, well, I live, like, I didn't live it, but my yeah. family lived it. My family was dirt, dirt fucking poor. They had about 13, 14 horses. Really lived in the, uh, the basement in the boiler room? No, I, not my, I'm talking about my grandparents. But I think it's, how do you, how do you. I guess it's like a fucking horses were breeding all the time, dude. They were wild. I'm thinking about the cab business, how they did this with the stagecoaches. But I'm guessing it's not like you don't yell. Like they have these. I'm just thinking about they have these big tubes that like I need to get tipped up at this point. No, it it would more or less like they'd have stops, like a bus. Yeah, where they would show up and then you get in and they'd be like, "Hey, how's it going?" It's like just tucked in like seven people in this little yeah. fucking horse carriage are y'all drunk you couldn't horse and buggy <laughs> your own way home that's just, <laughs> that's kind of true because no, imagine if you okay, were at the actually, bar they no, probably showed actually, up like I, need, I need to fucking quick reiterate this yes maybe back in the 1800s it was more of a commodity yeah it would have been but if we're talking like 1950s 60s yeah yeah it yeah. was like a dime a dozen yeah, guess, especially well, in mexico well that the 1950s man think about that right you could live off one income. Yeah. So well, even in different. Mexico, it was like what were my grandparents' rent like? Fucking must have been like something to the tune of fifteen cents a month. Yeah. So like the <laughs> it was a good business. You and, made, you and, made three and, bucks know, a day. Business was good for them, and they were kind of doing fine, laying low. And of course, with business comes competition. And the Donnellys were fierce competitors. Within months, the pressure had became too much for the owner and the other stagecoach, and he sold his business to Patrick Flanagan, the same dude that he fucking hated. Ah, uh, well, he probably ripped him off at least. Flanagan was a big Irish, was a big Irishman, and he had no fear of the Black Donnellys at all. Like this is like someone who could actually stand against them, and a battle for the Roman line soon erupted between the Flanagan family and the Donnellys. Yeah, it wasn't crazy. So like medieval time horses, uh, it, it was called a sumpter. <laughs> That's so weird. It was a pack of horse, a pack. We're, co- we're, we're talking about more than two. Like six horses. Would cost anywhere between five and ten shillings. How much is that in modern day? There were about 12 pennies in shilling. So a basic pack of horse would cost any laborer about two weeks worth of wage. Super fucking cheap. Well, you know, dirt cheap. You know what happens when you, uh, when people, well, it doesn't matter because they're all the same shit, but people like Trudeau that love inflation, inflation should only be 12%. Right now it's at 13.7% because of fucking Trudeau. So go fuck yourself, Trudeau. No, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Inflation is a fucking real thing. The reason why yeah, I can't fucking buy a house right now with 50 grand is because fucking inflation. Yeah. But meanwhile, who back cares? in the fucking it. 50s. Find a better a, job. <laughs> I, I make pretty good fucking money. Man. <laughs> I don't need to find a fucking better. I don't need to work seven days a week. I, yes, you do. I Honestly. I value yes, time you do. over money, man. Time. You can't buy time. Yeah. I understand that. 
So a battle for the Roman line erupted between the Flanagan and the Donnellys, called the Stagecoach Feud, by the people at the time. It was an extremely violent period, with arsons, fistfights, and attacks on each other's animals, which is like, that's the best way to attack in this time, is... It's hurt someone's feelings. No, no, it's hurt their animals, their livestock. That's their feelings. That's what I meant. That's what I meant by feelings. No... Their livelihood. I think that was a better way to say that. Yeah, because that's how they, that's how they make money. <laughs> that's, that's probably the, the word I meant and I yeah. didn't say. Sure. <laughs> so the Black Donnelly story came to a brutal end in the early hours of February 14th, 1880, when a group of vigilantes. Why, they kill them all? We'll get into it. No! Tom! Members of the Bidolf uh, Peace Society. No, they Quotations. The Peace Society uh, fell upon the Donnelly family homestead. Late in the night, there was a knock at the door. Hello? Who is it? (laughs) Who's there? (laughs) James answered and went to meet the visitors. Johnny O'Connor, a young farmhand who was sleeping in the Donnelly house that night, later testified in court about what happened next. What happened next, Tom? We'll get into it, but it's the fact that, you know what's funny? Like, in the book... No, I want to know what happened they, next! In the, in the book, they do talk more or less about the daughter's relations and stuff like that, and how they talk more or less about the boys, but it doesn't really get into what I Yeah, we I didn't have. really even talk about the daughter. No, this the, entire the thing. What is the daughter up to this she's whole time? She's just doing her own shit. She married a guy that nobody else kind of liked, the family didn't like, and she, I'm pretty sure, and if I can remember the book correctly. Um, but she kind of kept her own, but it was also kind of tough as nails kind of chick. Like, she didn't okay. take shit from nobody. Um, so Johnny awoke... To James Sr. getting dressed. Johnny's a bitch name. James <laughs> James Coral, the town constable and head of the Peace Society. <laughs> yeah, Peace. Uh, was in the kitchen. They sir, soon learned that Tom Donnelly was out front. And Tommy was the, the hardhead, which I get it. Yeah, he, fucking he, idiot. He was the hardhead of, of the bunch. Handcuffed and surrounded by a group of men. And I think... if I'm cr- Oh, Piper Perry did that once. If I'm correct. Tommy is no? one of the okay. youngest. <laughs> I don't know who Piper Perry is, a stupid comedian. What? I don't know who Piper Perry is, man. I don't watch sports. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know full fucking well who Piper Perry is. Is it a porn star? Yes. Oh my god, now you guys are yeah, <laughs> yeah. reference that I don't fucking know. You full well know who the fuck I Piper Perry is. I told you. Do you know that meme? I know 80s porn stars. Do you know that fucking. Do you know that meme where it's like 18 black, or yeah, eight we, black guys around a blonde Alex, girl? It's like, yeah, oh, I'm Alex, in trouble. We did this. We did this. We did this. We already did part. this? Yes. Oh. You and Alex were both like, you know, and I was like, no, I don't know who Piper We've already is. done this? Yes. I don't know who fucking Piper Perry is. And then you guys showed me the meme. I fucking know. Okay, well, then you should know now. Do you know who John Holmes is? Why didn't you retain that? Do you know who... Uh, was, why, did, uh, why didn't you retain that knowledge, Tom? Do you know who uh, uh, Katie Stewart is? Right? Any these fucking porn stars? Wait. Do you not go on Pornhub? I watch homemade porn, man. It's so much more fun. What are you, like, plug in your VHS? <laughs> yeah, I plug in a VHS. Like, do you got, like, a whole wall, like, like Barney from How I Met Your Mother, of, like, DVDs from, like, the... I actually do have a couple porn DVDs. I don't really know what to do with them. They're just in a box somewhere. It's kind of awkward, isn't it? What? Like having those physically in your house. Yeah. Because like, Ch- they're kind of like, like, like one of those things. Box, it's like, <laughs> and it's like when we move, she's like, it's just like in this bag of these like old It's DVDs. like, don't look, please. <laughs> no, That's Chelsea my knows bag. I, my, my girlfriend knows I have them. But I have like, I don't know, eight porn DVDs. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of nostalgic. You're man. like fucking Peter. We hide all his magazines up in the no, up in the house of the house. Is no. first house he ever lived at. And oh, he's to break gonna in. hate me, but you know it's funny. Uh. We went to the, the sex shop. This is like years and years ago, like years ago. Yeah, and she doesn't listen. She won't find out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I I think parody porns are fucking funny. 
So I saw the uh, Boys in the Hood parody porn. And That's I bought fucking it. hilarious. And I bought it. It was like 12 bucks. What was it? Boys in the fucking cooch? It's just fucking black guys fucking black girls. And they were like, oh, I thought it was Ricky. Why'd they shoot Ricky? And then it's like, <laughs> and, and shit like that. That's awesome. I love that. Porn parodies are the funniest fucking <laughs> shit. If I could own the SpongeBob one on DVD, I fucking would. Cause I just think it's fucking funny. a SpongeBob one. You ever see SpongeBob? Bob Square Nuts or whatever. It's like <laughs> fucking ew, <laughs> ew. We were showing at work the other day, laughing about, about it. That's disgusting, Tom. It's a guy that dressed like a SpongeBob. Cartoon. Oh, I thought you were literally watching cartoon porn. No, I thought you were watching like SpongeBob like suddenly get erect and fuck Sandy. You never the seen uh, or something. fucking Heavy Metal Man? Heavy Metal. It's a cartoon movie from like the '90s that showed a bunch of tits and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She okay, wrote on the fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that movie fucking made my head fucked. Yeah, like, whatever. You're, I don't know what to hor- like. I'm kind of horny now. Henty. And die. No, Henty. but you're a kid. Uh, yeah, I was making a joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, you couldn't pronounce it so, correctly. There's a lead. Okay, I guess get back into this. <laughs> um, so obviously the the young. I think it's the youngest son. Uh, I think Tommy was the youngest son was arrested and they find him in the kitchen. So the dad wakes up to literally his son being arrested and the cops like inside of his house, like the constable. And, and they, I'm going back to j- jail now. Yeah, to fuck beat this this shit. So they soon learn that Tom Donnelly was out front handcuffed, surrounded by a group of men demanding to see a warrant. So James Carroll, right? The town yeah, constable. Yeah. Tom told his father that, he thinks he's smart. So like it's Oh, so like, he's like mocking him. Yeah, he's mocking him. Okay. Seconds later all hell broke loose in the farm. Probably. 20 men bars in the kitchen bring clubs and spades with them. I don't I don't I don't know what a spade is back then other than a fucking Didn't we already I feel like we've had this exact conversation before. Like a fucking digging like a garden tool. I thought it was a garden tool. I'm 90. Fuck me. I feel, do you not remember this? Exact, I, I feel, I like, feel like, like after you do this so many times and so many things come up that like, don't come up that much. You're like, yeah, there, there's gaps in everyone's knowledge. I, know. I feel like we've talked about, I honestly think this is the third time we've talked about. Is this. there like a club with like a thing on the end? I'm 90% sure I'm going to Google it right now. Like I did the last two times and I don't remember either, but it is going to be a gardening tool. Romanized Japanese. Get Ungunsa Ahalu Agante, also called the Shalon Spade, is a Chinese pole weapon consisting of a <laughs> long pole with a flat spade, but it's a fucking spear head. It's a spear. What? They barged with, with a, a flat fucking blank, spear? Flat, a flat spade like spear on uh, one end and a similar crescent shaped blade on the other. It's an old Chinese Buddhist monk often had carried spades. Then? Holy fuck. Shovels pretty well. Shovels with sh- uh, yeah, it's a sharp shovel. shovels. It's a, it's a sharp shovel. It is a shovel that oh, got like carved. Like you know that you know the World War II shovels? Yes, shovel? it's a yeah, shovel that got carved. Yes, or the World War, it's probably World War One I'm thinking of. But the, again, that's where we got gardening tool from. I feel like we've had this fucking conversation uh, like three times now. So Anyways. this is where it gets fucking bad and sad for the Donnellys because somewhat of my like I don't know, juvenile essence is being like, oh, the Donnellys are dope. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're, they're hardcore motherfuckers. Fuck yeah. So they laid into James Sr. and Johanna and Tom being them bloody. The mom, Damn, the dad, and I think him, one of the youngest there was sons. too many of them. Because Tom was the one that was the biggest asshole of the entire group. He was the one that didn't give a fuck. Yeah, so I want to kill most Toms, I know. Uh, Tom, being strong and quick, barreled past his attackers and ran outside, despite his handcuffs. He's like, fuck this. Even if we will, <laughs> bring, we'll eventually bring it back to, like, Billy. What the were the kid. handcuffs back I know. then? Were they metal, you think? Yeah, because uh, Billy the Kid, which I know, Billy, I know you want to get into him, and we will in the next year or so um i know that you want to get into him but uh billy the kid escaped numerous times from handcuffs because yeah. back then they weren't like as what they are today it yeah. was like you could if you're skinnier and you could just yeah, fucking you're slip gone. out Billy the Kid was fucking like what five three too. He was not a even skinny. He's five he three. He was a Billy. No, I, th- I think he was that. Yeah, he small. was. He was. Uh, I still remember the fucking plaque I had in my wall growing up, dude. I literally like I had it hanging on my wall for ten years of Billy the Kid's description. But he was five three, uh, something to the tune of a hundred and ten pounds. I think it was. 
We'll get into it in another yeah. episode. But several men chased after. Minutes later, after beating him outside, the men returned and threw Tom to the floor. Johnny vividly remembered someone asking as Tom lay bleeding on the floor, hit that fellow on the head and break his skull open. Damn. Taking a spade, a member of the peace society obliged. Somebody beat the fuck out of Tommy. I'm sorry. I just Googled Billy the Kid and then I realized something. I think I know why I'm named what I am. Why? Okay, this is going to be the. We'll talk about this the last time. He was 5'7, by the way. He's a little bigger I than I thought. It, yeah. I thought he was like 5'3. Yeah. Billy the Kid, born Henry McCarthy, September 17th. What the fuck? That's my birthday. That's so crazy. That, so, this is why we have to get in that episode. That's my that birthday. It has to happen. Isn't that nuts? And you can do all the fucking research. Isn't that nuts? Are you going to do it? Yeah, I already know quite a bit about him. I, I five seven. I thought he was it. smaller than that. I, I feel want like- us to do it justice if we're going to do it though. So several. This is like we're all comes to is several men then ran upstairs, kicking open the door and murdering the Donleys' visiting niece. So she was just hanging out visiting, and they fucking killed her. Bridget. See, even the dog didn't like that. Did you hear that on the mic? Bridget. The dog whined. Her He's like, don't Bridget. kill her. She was only 21. Oh, that's sad. Covering the bed that Johnny was hidden under the coil oil. <laughs> uh, under the that co- sounds dirty. Coil. <laughs> they, uh, they lit the house on fire. Of course. After settling the farmhouse to a torch, the vigilantes move on. Selling the farmhouse to a torch. That's an awful curious way to say I burnt it down. After setting the farmhouse to a torch, the vigilantes move on. Not done with the grisly work, Johnny fled into the night. An unexpected survivor, a witness to the attack, the person that was living at the farm, their homie that was helping him do the farm, right? Yeah. A short time later, the mob arrived to the nearly... Uh, the mob arrived to the nearby house to the, of the farm's second son, William... The That's one me. that had the That's brain me. on. The one that was the smart one. That didn't really want to fuck around with the bad behavior, right? That, was around That's the one that, that that's a Billy. This is, how, Billy this is how fucked up these people are, though. Because it was around 2.30 a.m. And Will and his wife and his brother John and the family friend were all sleeping in their bed. Hearing shouts of, Fire! Fire from outside. <laughs> it's like, ah, they're high. <laughs> Going back to bed. John, John Donnelly went to the door and opened it, and two shots rang out. Pop, pop. Oh. Ripping through the chest and pelvis. No. So it shot right through oh, his chest. Oh, they were chest. calling fire to get them out of the house. Yes. You're fucking oh, right. Isn't that that's crazy? That's fucking dirty, man. He collapsed in a heap of blood. Oh, there's. That was a filthy way to do that. Thinking they have murdered William, the mob left. But even on that note, actually, like think think of being the person waking up to that. You woke up to it. Yeah. You heard somebody yelling fire. You get out of your room and you're in the main floor and you're like, there's no fucking fire. Like I, I would have been very precarious when I opened up the front door. It wouldn't have been like a charging out the front door moment. I would have been like a. Like, what's going on? (laughs) So John died on the floor of the Williams kitchen soon after. His cries, because Will was still upstairs. Will! Oh, he was on the kitchen side. I'm shot! I'm shot! Ring out through the cold winter air. Despite Johnny's eyewitness account, the courts never convicted of any vigilantes. The trial was soon closely tied into the country's politics. Johnny testified and confessed of the two murders, but it wasn't enough. The first trial ended in a hung jury. It wasn't enough. Yeah, so him, he confessed. Him te- like, and that's what, like, that's what's crazy. What? If, if him saying, like, it was, know, it was the Donnellys. Nobody is, liked yeah. them. They're like, nah, it was time it. for them to die. So anyway. a hung jury. Nobody wanted to really like testify and and mm-hmm. and and say that this was them or this. So the second trial. Led to nothing as well. History was not kind to the Donnelly family in years to follow. The victors wrote the story, and the family was blamed for all the violence, and this is how they became known as the Black Donnellys. What a crazy They pretty case, much man. were 
to blame for 90% and I'm of saying, it. <laughs> I, wanted, yeah. I wanted to dive into this. I read the book years ago. I wanted to get, like I'm saying, this could have been a lot longer, more detailed, but I wanted to just get the gist of the story because it's a fucked up story. It's crazy. Like we could have done this for hours, but I like just kind of giving the meat of the situation because and that's essentially what makes they more killed them all right? and they yeah. burned them all in fucking houses. And they're, they're sad. They and it is the boys. because they seem like the, the boys didn't seem that bad. They just like to cause mischief and they like to beat up people that's, and kill horses. Wow, that's super <laughs> fucking uh, light on the situation, but okay. But like, okay, in the end of the day, whose back do you have? Do you have the stupid farmers or do you have... <laughs> at the end of the day, let's look at it. These kids were fucking killing horses and poisoning cattle and burning Burned people's down. house down. Yeah, farms. The yeah. police weren't doing shit because people were scared. So eventually people were... Eventually it got to the point that I'm sure enough people paid money to this group to go in and kill them. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I could see that being like... That's like, you know, look, like, like um, they need I'll to die now. 10 shillings or whatever. And then the everybody yeah. fucking... That's what it was. Yeah, shillings yeah. from earlier. You got it. That was but medieval I'll pay times you, anyways. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just joking. It was, I'll it was pay from, you this many dollars yeah. if you go fuck them up because yeah. they've killed my horses, my thing. And it's just like, they're like the... I don't know. I just like I just feel bad a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Like kind of because I I like that mentality. They're they're half and half, right? Like you like that mentality of like don't fuck with me, but like you also like come on, man. You were fucking everybody. I know as much as like everybody hated you. And William was the one that had his head on his shoulders and kind of tried to bring the family together and be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this stuff. In some sense, if I can remember the book. When well there's enough. seven brothers, there's only, like, you get you get influenced. But easily. imagine if they would have left William alive or, you know, in in in. And not burn down their houses with them inside you because know. you it's know you know that if they came out they would have shot them dead right so like it's just, it's just crazy because this blood link the, the family dies there imagine if there was one Donnelly left that would have been dangerous Can no you, that wouldn't have been dangerous it would have been a crazy story to tell be like, me I am the tell grandson. me right now son yeah there's one Donnelly left do you think that motherfucker with that attitude wasn't just out for vengeance. He yeah, would have right. one by one killed yeah. every single fucking person. And we person. would have been talking about a, the serial killer named yeah. fucking William That Donald. would have been a totally different fucking thing. <laughs> that guy would have snapped so fast. But I guess, fuck it, it's time for... I saw that coming. <laughs> Billy's fun fact. Fucking fucking too much day. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I Google too many things. It's over. All right, here it is. There's an American town with, guess what their population is? It's a full town. A town, ha- we've discussed this on the podcast before. A town has to be over a certain amount of people or, or it's a village. Okay, you're right. So technically this would be a village. 600 people? Less. 400 people? Less. 198 people. Less. What? That's not, it's a fucking, that's not even a village. That's a fucking. Mm-mm. It's considered, smaller. it's considered a town. That's how big it is. That's not. The, but there's the not land? people living in there. Yeah. The land size itself was that big. You got a bunch of cryptids living there, like fucking nah, Bigfoot's hanging out with less, fucking. Less than 198. Keep going. 98? Less. Less than 98, you said. I said less than 198, but Fuck it's off. it's also less than 98. <laughs> How much did John just say? 20. Less. What? Six people. Less. I, I, I just fuck off. There's an American town with a population of <laughs> one. <laughs> Don't you believe that? One. No, it's not a town then. It's one guy. Monowiki, Nebraska is the only town in the United States with an absolute official population of one person. Oh, Alaska? That makes sense. No, Nebraska. Oh, I, thought you just... I was like, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Alaska, we all know how much is in Alaska. Anyways, it's in Nebraska. It's got a population of one person. Yes, she owes taxes. To who? Herself. She owns the fucking town. That's kind of crazy, though. She's in her 80s. She is currently employed as the village mayor, the the librarian, the bartender, 
and the postal care. <laughs> when was this, though? This is not now. One suggested by its pronunciation, Monowai. That's just to say, just one fucking person lives in this town. The only incorporated, unincorporated, government-run town in the entire U.S. to have such a population. That person is a single, solitary soul, is 87 years old, Elsie Eller. This town must be fucking tiny, though. That came out in March 31st, 2021. What? Really? So she could be dead by now, but I'm assuming she's not. What a crazy time. Isn't that nuts? That is weird. That's March 31st. That's only a couple months ago. All right. Well, fucking everybody, stay strange out there. Stay safe. Just joking. Don't get the vaccine. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 everybody out there, follow the pages, www.strangerpodcast.com. Get your fucking merch. We actually have a merch coming out soon. That's pretty um, cool. Don't talk to strangers. Is that us? Uh, no, no. Oh, uh, I was like, I was, I was wrapping your shirt there. I was like, fuck, that's dope. Uh, no, uh, we'll be getting there. Actually, we have, me and Billy have ideas for doing a t-shirt of like me and him with all sorts of fucking true <laughs> The Steve-o. <laughs> uh, yes, we just do, plastic we your do, fucking yes. faces on we you. We <laughs> do have ideas for t shirts with our face on if you ever want that. Um, but I'll pop up my tooth just for you guys. Yeah, me and me and Juan got one coming out. <laughs> We're both gonna be cryptids That's with gross. our face on it. It's <laughs> so, uh, yeah, follow stuff, uh, support the Patreon. Um, I know we're gaining and losing Patreon followers. We're trying to push out as much content as we can. Life's been busy for Billy, me, everybody, Juan, even everyone's a little busy right now it's a crazy time but support all of our stuff guys that's the biggest thing i've said this since day one so i'm i found an opportunity that's gonna make me a lot of money do really good for me but it takes up a lot of my time and i would love to do this more frequently but like it's at that threshold where it's like a i have responsibilities like i'm not a i'm not a fucking teenage kid that can just fuck off and if i only make four hundred dollars this month whatever yeah like i i have to make money consistently and like i'd love to do it this way but that needs to be through this yep and then that and then i can be more of a part of it and it can be more of a thing and like it's a dream for sure like that that'd be a great fucking job that'd be a great fucking like i'd love to be able to do this all the time interact with you guys and actually be present but Mm. Guys, you see, I haven't fucking posted on that fucking Facebook page for like months. Yes. Because I'm constantly fucking running around. Billy is always working and we will get there. That's why you're going to hear other people jump on here. But it's just because Billy is busy. But there is times where you will hear him lots. He's still going to be on the podcast all the fucking I'm time. I'm not leaving anywhere. Yeah, he, I'm he's not. Still, don't be sad. He's still going to be here. <laughs> Everyone be happy. Because and support us. How you support us is by buying merch. If the more you rep our shit, like even through the site we use, it doesn't get us a much monetary value. But the thing is, if you rep our shit, you have a t-shirt, anything. There's like mugs. There's everything you can have and post that. The more you, I love how all you said was mugs. Well, You're mu- just like there, you can have anything. There's mug, coffee mugs. There's mugs. <laughs> there's fucking stupid masks. Even if you fucking want it, there's fucking you can get a flag. You can get art. You can get a. You can Those, get a. If you can get a fucking lap. Top bag with the, a fucking those shit on Those mask sales probably are pretty too hot, are they? Yeah, I've bought one. Did you? I bought two, and I did at You're the beginning the only two of COVID. Sales, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much, because <laughs> nobody wants to buy fucking masks anymore, as in general. So, uh, but no, the more you support us and wrap our shit, the more opportunity we get. But to support. give you more shit. Yeah, we. Yeah, exactly. It's all dependent on this. This. Yeah, so mad. we love you guys. Support us. Do what you gotta do. But stay strange and don't get vaccinated. So what you have is these crazies, this force of crazy. Which is operating behind the scenes where no one sees it, anyone mentions it, you're mad. They don't exist. I have an obsessive mind, I'll leave my thoughts scratched in time. Believe I'm not like the rest of my kind. I don't fear cops, I've been arrested for crime. I've shed teardrops, no exit to find. You're all insects caught in the web of lies. Women in a thin dress, no their interest is brought by. You're sent to guys or animals and invention. Why? You think sexual tension is a high for us? Why we trust a bunch of lying fucks that won't die for us? Will we die for them? Eaten alive by the Leviathan. Rise up like Eastern tribes, beaten by the bad guys again. I don't believe I'll die. We've reached 
waste our time I'm the mad scientist in the lab with the rhymes when It's that time again Now I left to go Now I'm that you know Hold on, I'll be back for you This world leaves you black and blue I close my eyes and imagine you Or a suicide note to get back at you Why can't you lose the attitude? I'm not mad at you I look from a point of view that's different I could destroy you with rap rhythm Fuck the boys in blue crack slinging All about emotion and want, that's women Womanizer, hold my cock laughing as I trash women Girls clothing looking tighter as I stroll the block following the fashion image I have all knowing, no facts or fiction From God, you ask forgiveness for all your bad decisions Maybe you won't go to hell if you change and act different I'm pretty mad this isn't the place I thought I'd choose to come A monster running from who I'll become Like my father, want nothing to do with my mom Fights at home, you wonder why I like to be alone You're not smart enough to see what I know Sell your soul and fucking die slow Ground bases and eighteen. Look around at what we're facing. As a human race, you don't know what I do to escape this illusion as fake as virtual reality. What you think the purpose working for a salary? I'm researching the work of Alistair Crowley. Fascinated by how these Satanists got position of power. Rape is a should run in prison hour. World's a huge joke, and they miss this through hope. They fear our children to the demons down below. Do some research, now you know. The world's infested with evil, and they were lining on the intelligence of the people. So we stay slipped to sleep. But this grave is deep, there's no God saving me. Now I have to go. that doesn't exist and charges interest right, on it. But who's crazier than them? We stand for it! And the world isn't crazy.